Hurricane Fiona intensifying as it peels away from Hispaniola. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. The weather bulletin for September 20th. Right now, Fiona is very much the main picture, the thing to look at right now. Likely a major hurricane category 3 according to our latest estimates with Tropical Storm Madeline uh, taking the second string in terms of the attention in the eastern Pacific. Well then of course Fiona is a very major storm right now after piling through the Greater Antilles. It's moving away from uh, the Dominican Republic right now. There's two other areas of interest that we're currently monitoring with uh, moderate, low to moderate chances 30% each. Looking towards the Eastern Pacific we still have Tropical Storm Madeline which is a little bit stronger right now around 60 to 65 miles per hour although it is fighting a lot of wind shear at this time and is moving out to sea it will start to weaken from here on in in the western pacific things are uh, quietening down now after Namadol uh, completed its transitions now really a front moving over Japan there's two other areas of interest that are low chances at the moment but low confidence means that it could creep up on us rather quickly as we get through the next five days and in the Indian Ocean, north and south, there's no areas of interest that we've marked at this time and we're not expecting activity here in the next five days. So then let's take a look at the satellite imagery of the main features around the world. Of course the Atlantic Ocean looks like this. There's Fiona, very easy to see on this imagery. And you can see some of those blue colours. This is water vapour imagery showing that the rainfall masses are still very much reaching uh, the Dominican Republic. Uh, the north coast and the south coast still getting quite a bit of it by the looks of things. And Puerto Rico still uh, certain amounts there as well. There's a look at the eastern Pacific and you can clearly see Madeline there fighting very um, high wind shear values on the eastern side and to its west it's got dry air so it's a bit stuck between a rock and a hard place let's look at the mesoscale rapid scan imagery of fiona and you can see the eye appearing once again much more well defined than it's been previously and it kept its eye feature all the way through its uh, land interactions with Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic and now it's moving out to sea and is wasting no time in intensifying with ADT values now supporting category 3 status. It is certainly very close to if not already at that strength and you can see it quite clearly there on that satellite imagery blowing up some very good cloud tops and the eye temperature itself I imagine is getting quite high uh, denoting a very clear eye if that wasn't already apparent on the satellite imagery. Moving to the eastern Pacific there you can see once again another look at Madeline and an area of interest possibly towards its east and looking out over the rest of the Atlantic is that little innocuous looking feature towards the left hand side there that could be the next system that develops another system maybe off the coast of Africa and further north there's not too much going on in the subtropics other than National Hurricane Center do have a system marked in the open ocean. Western Pacific right now in the shadow of Namadol, well it's just a big area of chaos really, a slop area there and we eventually expect that something will come out of that um, soup that eventually might become one or two substantial storms and maybe a strong typhoon. Philippines got to watch out for that as well as Japan for potential new storms in the next five days. Indian Ocean satellite imagery looking fairly... Um, not very interesting right now, not very noteworthy, not much going on there. Across the coast of India though, a little bit of uh, heavy rainfall. Uh, across Australia, the South Australian coast getting some rainfall there by the looks of things right now, but generally very quiet across the whole region once again. So let's take a look now at the sea surface temperatures. No, we're not there yet actually. Yes, we are. Sea surface temperatures are currently 
Still warm around Madeline, although it will start to decrease a little bit. Temperatures hovering around 26 degrees Celsius, so only just enough for it. Where Fiona is right now, it's still got a lot of room to take advantage of warm sea surface temperatures. 28 to 30 degrees Celsius, and they'll actually warm a little bit as it moves in the next two to three days over the Sargasso Sea and start to cool as it heads towards Bermuda and pass by. Plenty of opportunity for the storm to reach Category 4 status. Indian Ocean sea surface temperatures remain warm as we prep for the second peak of the Bay of Bengal season that we usually get. North Indian warm. Uh, Western Pacific still a quite substantial cool trail now after Namadol's passage but still sea surface temperatures are good all the way up through the East China Sea and in the Philippine Sea very warm indeed. 30 degrees quite common prevalent there and particularly in the South China Sea looking out for potential systems to really latch onto that 30 to 32 degrees Celsius uh, waters and that as you can see on the anomalies here is a little bit above average in general across the western Pacific too La Nina still well in effect in full flow there in the eastern Pacific and quite a few areas below average now but look at the Atlantic pretty much above average across the board as we enter well we're still in peak season uh, so really anything everything goes for the Atlantic right now Oceanic heat content beneath Fiona is okay. It's uh, It's got a fair amount, not as much as it would have in the Caribbean, but still a decent amount. Western Pacific, very warm conditions there. Oceanic heat content through the roof once again, as you'd expect. Eastern Pacific struggling. Well then, let's check what the GFS model has come out with at their latest run, the 18Z, and this is what transpires regarding Fiona giving a close pass to the Turks and Caicos Islands. The weaker side, though, will be reaching there. Uh, Bermuda, though, could get the stronger side of the storm, and it could be a Category 4 at that point. And in the next five days, the formation of that second system, that wave that we're monitoring, uh, a low latitude system, so that always rings alarm bells, uh, moving through the southern uh, the Windward Islands as a strong tropical storm, possibly reaching Category 1 status briefly and then possibly deteriorating a little again. Eastern Pacific, Madeline there goes without event really, uh, but we're watching out for maybe another system forming behind it eventually towards the end of that five day period. Hasn't been marked today due to low confidence, but you can see it there as a tropical storm towards the end of that five day period according to the GFS. We're not expecting anything major from that storm, although it could become a hurricane later down the line. Land impacts should be minimal, and if any, will be in its initial phase. Western Pacific, what comes of that big area of general low pressure and storminess? And you can see two weak lows that try to become tropical cyclones. One of them makes it to Japan, the other one eventually becomes a significant typhoon category one at the end of that five day period there's another system that's lurking about the uh, mariana islands as well on that imagery i think and maybe even one further east as well so maybe some extra storms to bump up the numbers there and looking at the atlantic ocean then back to the rainfall estimates for fiona and you'll notice there parts of the turks and caicos islands coburn town on the eastern periphery of those islands the, the uh, main town there uh, could get quite a lot of rainfall as well as hurricane force winds. We could be looking at up to 10 inches for the area. For Bermuda, maybe around 4 or 5 inches. That will get marked out in a moment. And for parts of Canada later on, which could get hurricane force winds as well as heavy rainfall, which could reach 6 or 7 inches in some areas, although those numbers aren't clear cut just yet. But that certainly gives you an idea of what we might see uh, in the later period of Fiona by the time it gets to Atlantic Canada. Watch out closely because model um, National Hurricane Center Cone as well as models have trended westwards and look like a Canada landfall is much more likely. Longer range there, the hurricane force winds move inland over Canada and look at that, a hurricane landfall for Jamaica for this next system and then really blowing up as it approaches Cuba, that would be a terrible forecast uh, but there it is and becoming a very strong hurricane in the eastern Gulf of Mexico within the 10 day period. We don't want to raise alarm just yet, this is just the GFS model run, other model runs showing different but this has been a trend that's been showing up for quite a while now, four runs in a row I believe for the GFS for a strong hurricane in the western Caribbean. 
Eastern Pacific in that same five to ten day period develops that second system into a hurricane eventually and uh, is a little bit of an ace bumper uh, in terms of the statistics there but should remain out at sea uh, quite clearly. Uh, so yeah, potentially a hurricane there and maybe a third system that tries to develop there to the east but will be very short lived. Western Pacific, Philippine Typhoon landfall there but that is very uncertain and then takes advantage of the South China Sea and becomes a very strong typhoon into Vietnam and another strong typhoon forming over the main uh, Western Pacific region there. So certainly being on guard for the Western Pacific for more typhoon activity which had been foreseen by uh, climate prediction models in the long range looking outwards to the late part of this season. Well, that's the important stuff done with uh, at this point. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store for all of our items, including uh, individual and full season storm animations on request. And are still waiting for Hone t-shirt. Uh, that's the next name in the Central Pacific in case you were wondering. Into the Silly range then, well, we're looking here at a landfall there on the 1st of October, early hours in the Florida Panhandle region from that next storm. Uh, that would be a big landfall once again. And very late on in that loop, towards the 5th and 6th of October, another storm forming uh, out in the Central Atlantic. But look at that massive landfall there for Florida after it moved through Cuba as an extremely powerful hurricane as well. Major category three or four but that is an extremely long way out and rightly in the silly range eastern pacific in that long range as well not too much to tell you about just that hurricane proceeds and continues and actually lives quite a long life when you look at it there um, and is continuing there 4th of october 5th of october it's just about holding on then it lets go right at the end of that forecast that's day 16 and it could become on the radar on, on maybe day three or day four if things go well for it so that one might last for a while check the western pacific and what happens in the longer range there well that next typhoon surely not another problem for japan let's hope not uh, but there it is sweeping by the coast and another storm spinning up in the South China Sea and delivering another landfall to Vietnam just a few days after that last powerful typhoon did so. It actually forms through the middle. Oh no, that's a different system. Uh, the initial system does form there and then a next system forming through the Visayas region of the Philippines there towards the end of that loop. There you can see it just about to form and then moving through the Visayas on the 4th and 5th of October and moving out over the South China Sea and developing. But that is extremely far fetched at this point in time. On this day, a really historic storm made landfall on Puerto Rico on September 20th, 2017. Hurricane Maria and a lot of parallels have been drawn with Fiona's recent passage five years later, almost to the day. Although, of course, Maria was much stronger. Uh, nearly a category 5 when it made landfall and was a category 5 just before it reached land. Historic storm was Hurricane Maria. Jose and Lee were also still active on this day. Back to this year and to this period in time that we've got right now, the next name on the, Atlant on the Atlantic storm list is Gaston. In the Eastern Pacific, Newton is next up, and in the Central Pacific, we're looking out still for Hone. I don't know why we bother though. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Talas, uh, the North Indian Ocean, Sitrang is next up. And so uh, we're still waiting for storm number 61 for the year so far. In the Australian region, the next name is Darien. The Southwest Indian Ocean will start off with Ashley. And in the South Pacific, our next name is Harley. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night. <laughs>